This was meant to be the ultimate way to solder of vias into homemade PCBs. Um, it's something I was struggling with at the start of the week a little, so I thought, let's set aside some time and let's try everything. And I made these like little scratch boards. Actually, I made, I'm gonna show you them all for fun. I made a lot of these little scratch boards. They have like just a whole bunch of traces and you can try different techniques. And I tried different size holes, different size wires. I kind of had a technique that was working pretty good. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna contrast this with the way I was doing it originally, which was, you know, wrong size wire into the wrong size hole, clip it and disaster. And it kind of worked every time when I did that. I couldn't really honestly make a video where that was like really bad. And I think ultimately what happened is after all that practice, I got better at soldering. <laughs> the first trick to remember is the easiest via to solder is no via. So there's a lot of things you can do in your design. First of all, sometimes people just punch the hundreds and even thousands of vias into the board because they're free and they conduct heat and they're easy and definitely more of them is better when you're going to the ground plane and that kind of stuff. But this is a homemade prototype PCB. Don't do that. So that's like 80% of your via is already gone. Secondly, um, you don't always need a via to go right through the board and then back up on the other one. Sometimes you can just solder a wire in. Like, don't, don't be shy to just like bodge this stuff in because it's a homemade prototype PCB and you're soldering it by hand anyway. If that's easier, do that. If that's harder, don't do that. Another thing is you usually have your ground plane in, on one layer and you know if you have a multi-layer board you sometimes have a power plane in there even but you can actually take those out to the edges and you can put your ground on one side and your power plane on the other and then just connect them with electrical tape and you know sure the side's conductive and you know you're gonna have to be careful with that kind of stuff but it's very easy and um, that can save you a whole bunch of vias and it's like almost as good and it's not like you're not allowed any if there's a like a ground island in the middle somewhere you can definitely punch down a few vias and if that ends up being some ugly looking solution all the better eventually though you're gonna have to solder some vias but the solution is the same as all other problems think of a whole bunch of things you can try and then try a whole bunch of things. I'm down to two go-to techniques for this. First technique, I use ethernet wire. It's 0.5 millimeters. Then I drill a 0.6 millimeter hole. That gives a little bit of wiggle room, enough for the solder to wick down. Then when I stick the copper wire through, I bend it towards the trace and snip it at an angle. This leaves a nub sticking up. And that nub, you can take a very thin soldering iron tip, stick it on there. And because the tip is thin, you want to leave that for an extra second. So the whole joint and everything heats up. Then I apply very thin solder to that. And when I pull away, I kind of pull at an angle. Now I was doing this with lead free and leaded solder so it wouldn't fall out on the other side. But I found if I just do the other side reasonably quickly and I do the same clamping, um, everything kind of works out pretty good there. The other technique I'm using a lot is this custom wire. There's a few advantages to this. 
The biggest one is you can just select the number of strands you want for the thickness, twist those together and get a wire of any size you want. Second advantage is because it's twisted, it's got a little bit of uh, friction when you stick it in the hole. But the biggest advantage of twisted wire is it wicks incredibly well. You can see that in this demo, like you just heat it up and the solder will flow like centimeters along the wire. And that's true for like, you know, double twisted wire or triple twisted or tightly twisted. It just really, really wicks well. So the technique, you plop it in the hole, heat up the hole and the, the wire together with a fine tip soldering iron. Add some solder, you'll see it blob and wick onto the wire, but you'll also see it wick up and it wicks down through the board to the other side. Um, you snip this above the blob and now you have a single wire that's soldered together. You do the whole top side like this, then you flip the board and now you have uh, you know a centimeter or so hanging and when you heat up that joint, it'll actually pull some of that solder down onto the joint. You probably need to add a little bit more solder, but um, once that's done, just clip, clip, clip and you're done. All right, that's it for this semi-deep dive into vias. I know there's a lot of other ways of doing this, and if you have some that work particularly well for you, please leave a link or a comment down below. All right, we'll see you in the next video.